program this morning is a public affairs professional and the convener of One Heart's Initiative for Equity and Good Leadership, yeah. Hashimu Suleiman. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's a pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Pleased to be here. Now, let's talk about our beloved country, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And it's setting the pathway through a review of our constitution. There have yeah. been calls for the constitution. The other day, we discussed the difference in certain geopolitical regions mm -hmm. in their perspective of what this would mean for power sharing. Absolutely. We've seen a member of the House of Representatives, led by Benjamin Carlo, Honorable, looking to also make a case for a rotation of power. Mm -hmm. but, but beyond all of that mm -hmm. is the true nature of what the constitution looks to provide for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Whilst the constitution reads, we the people of Nigeria, mm -hmm. many people have said that the 1999 constitution is more of a post-military industrial uh, uh, document and not mm -hmm. necessarily a constitution guided by the tenets of democracy. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? No, I, I, I don't necessarily agree. You see, the thing is, over time, and you would have to understand that whatever it is that is happening everywhere and that is progressive related, it's a consequence of people's deliberate attempt at trying to be progressive in nature. So therefore, at the end of the day, look, we're a people who love to always find consolation as to the reason why we cannot take responsibility for the consequences of our actions. And so we love cliches like that. And trust me, when you hear all of those kind of cliches, you no, know, why do you have to go back to old national anthem or maintain the new national anthem. Nobody can really sit down and critically give you his reasons as to why he... Once one, two, three people have started saying it and then it becomes a cliche and then everybody starts to say, no, why go back to... But really, perhaps maybe when you listen to those who are speaking about it as to why they think it should be, you'll probably be able to sit down and also think not like you cannot even have the contrary one but it shouldn't be simply based on the fact that it's become a cliche is a bandwagon and people feel like this so the question you would ask is the constitution itself how much of efforts have the people of the country put into at least implementing a whole lot of it do you understand what i mean like if you're a leader in this country right now and you want to make reforms or you want to, you have so much work to do because the social engineering itself you're going to need people to work in various levels in the civil service up to level three or the messengers and everybody and the fact is that the necessary criticality that you need to even have the current laws implemented is not readily available talk more of now talking about so who is the person who is actually agreeing or that has made as much research that could suggest that the 1999 constitution is not workable that's what i'm looking for that i've not found but what personally i have researched and seen is the fact that you do not have enough criticality to even comprehend the constitution itself like in terms of the people really reading it through to even know what's inside before understanding okay this area i understand it i don't agree with it or that it's always more about bandwagon it's almost always about some sort of entitlements and uh, and perceptions and and insinuations now, so, now one so, of this so we need to get maybe a little more critical so i can understand okay what are the workable areas or not now one of the mm. perceptions of nigerians mm. is in compared to what is obtainable in other climes mm -hmm. the lack of a referendum in the 1999 constitution mm. and in contributing to some of the laws that govern the sovereignty of nigeria mm. it almost rests with the shoulders of the national assembly there's very little room for public mm. input into this. this so 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 then now what do you now say to a citizen who is talking like this for example and then chooses to collect 500 naira to vote somebody else to come and serve him in senate other than who he truly feels can come to the senate and probably you know from the number that can be able to change the constitution immediately in a minute and put in all of these things that you're talking about do you understand what i mean so can you now see the place of that social engineering that i'm talking about so at the end of the day look the constitution will not change itself i'm not sure that anybody who comes to give you 500 naira to buy your vote would come to the national assembly 
to discuss about how they should do all of these things. Perhaps you want to cook back his, his whatever it is. So, so the thing, at the end of the day, it still rests back to us being a little more critical about these issues. The 1999 constitution that gives us the right to vote who we want, to, to, to do the appropriate things we need to do, we have not been able to, to, to utilize all of the you know, privileges it has given to us. And then we would now want to look for something that we will hang on to to, con to console ourselves as to why we don't want to take responsibility for the consequences of our actions. And that's, that's the crux of the conversation around all of this. Do you understand what I mean? For me, this is how I look at it. And this is based on my stay as a young person that critically looks at um, that pays attention to details. Do you understand us against trying to really latch on the whole lot of uh, bandwagon. I, I'm not somebody who, who wants to go with the crowd uh, some of the time. Some others, why not? Yeah. Now, it's important uh, that we have this level of social reorientation mm -hmm. or social engineering like you talk about mm -hmm. it. But now, let's speak on the issue of election. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst a lot of Nigerians perceived respite and hope mm -hmm. in the electoral act that came into being, mm -hmm. The constitution has also been faulted in its provisions to enable issues like diaspora voting mm -hmm. and even the use of technology at its highest level in the deployment of BVAS and transmission of results in mm -hmm. real time mm -hmm. on the IRF portal. Mm -hmm. Now, do we re-amend an already amended constitution mm -hmm. or do we outrightly seek for a new constitution that captures this aforementioned issues of electronic voting, diaspora voting, mm -hmm and the technicalities around the electoral act absolutely yeah in fact the the the, the need for electoral act to be amended i mean has been ongoing and the fact of the matter is if you talk about the framework of of the of the elections and how they are being held whether anybody likes it or not there has been improvement i mean professor tahir jega came and did the card reader everybody even can readily remember the outcomes of the utilization of the card lead card um, card reader right which orchestrated how opposition was able to beat an incumbent while the incumbent is still contesting do you understand what i mean and that's 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 a plus to democracy and then we came fast forward now well you know there's one thing that's very very important i'm somebody that is a realist and i know how to separate idealism from reality. I also, as much as I want maybe all of the laws of Nigeria to be the best, or I also do recognize the place of power play. In power play, you don't, you don't only find it in Nigeria, you find it all over the world. Wherever you go, if it's monarchy, they are, they are, they are practicing, you know, it's democracy, they are practicing. Do you understand? I mean, recently, Trump was at the campaign ground and, and he almost got shot. It's public knowledge. It's not something that's that's power play. I mean, so those are the separate things. Do you understand what I mean? 2019, there was a proposal for for the amendment to have been done then when Bukola Saiki was the Senate president. But perhaps uh, the then president, for fear of knowing that he's going into the election and maybe the repercussions that that will have on him, he chose not to sign it at that point. But he eventually did sign it before he left. But perhaps people will say the only lacuna that was left in that was the fact that, you know, the transmission of the results from the, from the polling unit to the IREF portal was not made official. And so that lacuna was still left perhaps to be, to be explored. But by and large, when you look at the, the, the outcome of the 2023 elections, for example, you would say it was fairly because, look, everybody will blame the fact that it was the opposition that was divided that let APC win the elections. Everybody would, I mean, it's become a normal language everywhere on the street of our, do you understand what I mean? So apparently you would say that maybe not 100%, I, I'm not sure there's anywhere that is perfection, but I think the votes counted. The opposition, do you know that a combination of the opposition House of Reps member, a combination of all the opposition is more than the APC House of Reps members? Yes, of course. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, if, if the votes are not counting, how could that? Uh, how could the ruling party have allowed the combination of the opposition to be more than their own members, for example? Do you understand what I mean? So there are improvements right now. I know there are com conversations around how to amend the, the 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 act, but you see, you also have to remember the place of media and civil society. How much is the civil society 
and the media, for example, even taking this conversation around electoral reforms as a front burner conversation. Do you understand what I mean? How much pressure are we seeing that there is on the National Assembly to initiate conversations around it? It's going to be a tony one. I, I'm not somebody who will sit and feel that um, um, probably a lot of these players are, are seeking for a re-election. It is not likely that you will see a, a major shift. There could be improvements here and there and on what have you. Yeah, but I, I, I still don't see personally as a student of politics and public affairs and how its engineering works, I'm not sure that um, the, the transmission of results may necessarily become official by 2027 elections. I see that perhaps after 2027 elections, that might come into being. Do you understand what I mean? And then it continues to improve like that. Do you understand? But basically i think this is my thoughts around some of these um issues around electoral um i i think it's not as an amageddon as people like to look at it i think a whole lot of opposition people win elections in nigeria governors be at whatever level we see it. and so i i think that um we, we should try as much as possible to be a little more and when we're critical We'll be able to not put in too much emotions to think when there's some sort of an Armageddon situation. But, but again, what must be crowned on top of it all is we must always remember that there will be consequences for whatever actions we take as citizens, no matter how little. Now, you, you talked about the role of civil society and or refer to some that we know of and uh, our station over time has interacted with. Take, for instance, the Action Aid. Mm. They had a, a dialogue with ju judicial correspondents mm -hmm. and they came up with an 11 point recommendation. And uh, we'll start with some of them and look at them together. Mm -hmm. Now, they talked about issues of pre election matters mm -hmm. and how cases go beyond the appeal court and mm -hmm. linger yeah. and are still tendered before the Supreme mm -hmm. Court when Absolutely. we're talking about post election Absolutely. issues. Now, for pre election matters, they say this matter should be determined before the election with most pre-election cases, except for the gubernatorial mm -hmm. and presidential election. Yes. This also aligns with the constitution we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. But in keeping with, how do you think that political actors have somewhat played with this as a tool in post-election debates? Absolutely. And, and that's if you listen to the outgoing um, chief justice of the one that left recently, he spoke about how really the Supreme Court should be less burdened with a lot of the cases that even have to come to her. So let me let me give you a, now a critical uh, things like this could actually go through before 2023 uh, 2027 elections. Do you understand what I mean? I see all of these issues around cases going through up to the Supreme Court and all of that. I see them. But I only told you one area that I am not very optimistic would change would be that part where um transmission will become official i'm not i'm not optimistic i don't want to give myself a false hope i like to always appropriate my expectations based on my experiences and what, what i understand about power play politics and, and and what have you you know so i see areas like that really big because indeed they are choking the nation in, indeed they are totally unnecessary and they're, they're really making some sort of mockery of, of the whole judicial system. So I think for the players inside the judiciary itself to be speaking at that high level about the fact that they are burdened with a lot of these cases, I think really is an area that will easily be dealt with. It's just like also the issue of um, local government autonomy, for example. Do you understand what I mean? Like, look, it just happened recently that the Supreme Court has... How many Nigerians have really come out to celebrate that? But those are actually part of the things that we're clamoring for to be changed in the Constitution. But I, I really need you to tell me how many Nigerians have maybe contributed or said a good thing about that compared to how much bad they say about the things that they feel are not all right. But those are the things, because look, the Constitution change does not mean monies will start coming into your pocket for free. I, perhaps maybe that's what Niger some Nigerians feel, no? I don't think so. They should understand that these are the things that are going to be about it, like how opportunities can be expanded and enhanced so you would find your strategy on how you want to key into it. No, but nobody's going to come and pull your hands and tell you this money, more money has come to your local government. How do you want to key in? It's totally your business, largely. And the mentorship you have around you, be it your father or your friends or your, or your siblings, 
who will tell you to do like this and, and learn a skill and go like that, then you find a way to try and key in. A whole lot of Nigerians who have keyed in to what's available are doing what they have to do. You're here, me and me, we're having a conversation with Nigerians. We don't have, I didn't need to have connection to come here. Do you understand what I mean? I only people have probably only heard me speak here and there and they feel okay this guy has got something to we've seen a whole lot of young people. Victor Osimen now they're talking about him, he's moved to Galatasaray. Do you understand what I mean? He's in Nigeria with humble beginning from somewhere. I give people a lot of people example with the Pokolis and what have you. They started from nowhere, they're good, they're 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 representing Nigeria everywhere. So people who choose to utilize the system who understand it and who be humble about it and take out any element of entitlement are able to really work around the system but you have to under but most of the young people like to jump on the bandwagon to console themselves for a whole lot of things that they've not done now let's talk about some of the legal technicalities mm -hmm. the ex party orders and the table on which it falls on mm -hmm. many talk about the judiciary and the pressure on judges mm -hmm. Now, we've seen an administration that has moved to strengthen the judiciary by increasing uh, the salaries of judicial officers by mm. 300%. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of the fight against corruption, whilst we have a constitution that is to be followed to the latter mm -hmm. and uh, seem to be working by this class of individuals, mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of debate on how the NJC operates in the appointment of judges, the profiling, mm -hmm. and their role in post electoral matters. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? Yeah, so you know, um, there are there are there are privileges of office holders, but then maybe perhaps some people could choose to abuse those privileges. But again, what you still need to ask yourself is how much pressure, because democracy, right, in its nature, it loves pressure. You have to put pressure, and that's why you see recently maybe a lot of Nigerians are concerned. And they feel that no PDP is not doing as much um, opposition because you know what Nigerians are expecting is they want to see that level of pressure they want to see that level of be it I mean remember how APC played opposition back then now there was a lot of pressure they were always on the streets protesting they were, they put so much pressure on the on the government but let's be honest like right now so instead of Nigerians to have opted to go for the um, end hunger protest or whatever. Those kind of protests are more needed in a whole lot of other areas. How many times have Nigerians go to, gone to the NGC office, the headquarters, do you understand what I'm trying to say, to carry a placard and say, no, we don't agree with this, this or that. Put the pressure, put the necessary pressure so there can be some reaction. Do, do you think that this lack of knowledge, similarly like you put it, is from the technicalities that has to do with understanding the law yes, itself? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So you have to understand the law before you even um, query it. Otherwise, you'll just be speaking and maybe you even go to the court foolishly and you lose because you didn't need to understand, okay, these are my boundaries. This is where I have to stop. So the fact is that if you protest on the street about hunger, regardless, it is still reforms that will be done, government reforms that will still go through bureaucracy and what have you. So why don't you rather target those areas in the bureaucratic system or in the general system that you really think that are faulty, like these areas that you're seeing, expert orders and appointments and what have you. Why don't you engage those areas, put in the necessary pressure? And trust me, if you put the pressure at every point in time, uh, people have put pressure on issues in the world, democracy-wise, democracy they have succeeded. Even in Nigeria here, yeah, I think the, the president have reversed more than how many things that I know after coming to power from May 29 last year. He has reversed several things that Nigerians put pressure on. I cannot bring them all by head, but I know he has re reversed at least, even appointments he has reversed, withdrawn ministers. There was uh, one lady that was nominated for minister, I think after a lot of backlash and what have you, he withdrew it. There were a whole lot of other things that when the appropriate pressure, do you understand, is put. But so I think it's really about citizen engagement. And I think it's about how platforms like this and more can always be used to be able to educate the citizen so that he will also appropriate his expectations.
the citizens will have to understand that there's not going to be any free lunch regardless of how much you you want things to happen magic cannot be done it still has to be about the processes taking place before to create the enabling environment for you to key in so if you if you have any um phantom expectation that there's just going to be some magic I, i think really we need to change all of that now let's look at another recommendation by some mm. of these civil society groups mm. they're also recommending an unbundling of the office of the chief justice of nigeria to True. decrease the concentration of power they're in that opinion mm-hmm. suggesting that we have deputies at all heads of court mm. to also reduce the time it takes to prosecute issues tendered before the court mm-hmm. what do you make of this recommendation yeah it's a beautiful recommendation trust me um because they say absolute power corrupts absolutely so perhaps if you concentrate power in a, in a place without checks and balances then there's tendency for it to be abused i mean regardless of who it is that's that is with it but you know now again now comes back to national assembly and that's why look there has to be absolute voter education so for example you cannot blame the president for your inability to vote the appropriate lawmaker i don't know whether you understand what i mean here because look you cannot take you can you have to put in something before something else will come out do you understand what i mean and so and what we even shock you is that during elections in nigeria the conversations are always robust interviews are held tv stations do people discuss on facebook twitter everywhere but at the end of the day you still see that the outcome will be something other than what has even been spoken about so you will still you will just keep wondering like don't even parents educate their children to say okay look this is how you should view your country this is the history of how things have come and how we need the national assembly to be ex- very very fortified from mediocrity do you understand what i mean and all of that and so we must look at the best people from our societies and put them forward to go and represent us and what have you so really i think again it is a function of the social engineering of the society and think that there is absolute need for awareness for everybody to understand their own responsibilities for for the leaders at all strata to understand that they've got a responsibility be it traditional um, leaders religious leaders and everybody to understand we just need to make our people aware perhaps if we need to even start teaching the constitution in various religious teaching places at least introduce some of it tell them about what their rights are what how they can move and tell them how important the national the national assembly is the only difference between democracy and any other form of government now now let's talk about <laughs> some of the challenges with election and how it is perceived mm. and it still falls back on some of the recommendations of what should be included in our constitution if we should have a new one mm. or a reamendment of the amended constitution mm. and it's from the perspective of undue influence persons who have worked within the body of the electoral mm. umpire INEC. Mm. There are recommendations that such individuals be barred by the constitution from participating in partisan politics for a period of at least five years having left the mission. Mm-hmm. Many are also talking about the way the appointment of the INEC chairman mm-hmm. is done. Mm-hmm. Some of the provisions in constitution that would ensure that the person in that position is entirely not partisan. Yeah. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you approach this subject? But really, like, is it is it really possible to have um citizens that will not have any form of bias or another i i, I think it's is largely but you could have people who also place their integrity over perhaps so maybe by this. not carrying a party card yes yes that's what i'm saying so you could have people who have um their integrity over over a whole lot of this um consideration so the thing is even when some of these things happen and you you hear the conversations maybe from the government side they always have their defense to it but again like i told you is all of these things around because look if i'm the leader or i'm the president or whatever and i see that certain privileges have been left for me to utilize by the by the laws of the land i would utilize them do you understand what i mean but as much as possible even when these things happen you see that the civil society and maybe a few people speak about it maybe for a day or two and it's over 
how much pressure do citizens put? Look, I'm sure you see what's going on around the world in some countries where you see the citizens they will occupy a place and stay there for one year. <laughs> Impossible. Do you understand what I mean? Like, there's no way you will not do what it is that you want to do. Compare the protest in Kenya to that that happened in Nigeria. The Kenyans were able to extract something out. But guess what? In Nigeria, it's extremely difficult for you to achieve this. In fact, I have said it, I've written it on my social media page, I have said it everywhere. It's because I have, I'm, I'm, I'm coordinating this One Heart initiative. There was a time I, I tried to bring Nigerian youth together over a decade ago. And trust me, my experience from that particular venture that I went on was enough to make me understand, look, it's, it's, it's one, one of the most impossible tasks in the world is for you to get Nigerian youth to all come together for one cause. Because at the end of the day, there will be one issue or another that will crop up, either about tribe or religion, or now they even begin to suspect simply because you want to assemble them means you must have gotten a contract or do you understand what I mean or somebody is sending you or all of that. So so all of those insinuations will so so at the end of the day look there is no pressure. There is no any unified pressure that will come on a lot of this on, on this thing. So perhaps if you if you or me if is a leader who wants to consolidate everybody loves power who wants to consolidate and the law has given you that like you know and which you're sure that even if there's going to be pressure, it's going to be minimal, that you can be able to manage people who utilize uh, our privileges. So the thing is, at the end of the day, unless we, and the media, you see, and that's where you see when people say media has a lot of responsibility, and that the strength of any democracy is as strong as its civil society. Do you understand what I mean? Unless we get to that part where we can actually... Um, all utilize the various platforms we have to make the people as aware as they should be. A lot of these things that, for me, resemble idealism may be difficult to come by. Do you understand? But, but to be honest, I think Nigeria is not um, a failed nation. I think Nigeria is working. I think when you look at the interest that even the West... Uh, the president is in China right now. You saw the level of ours on some other program where China and Nigeria came and, and they did a joint program to discuss about how much Nigeria and China relationship. If you hear the trade volume of how much is going on between us and China, including exports, solid minerals and what have you, China takes a lot of our crude oil also. Do you understand? So we have big, and apart from now, also Nigeria, who are in China, who bring in... On exchange goods. programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now yeah. let's talk about this exchange program. You see the way you beautifully put it, mm -hmm. ahead of this uh, 2024 Africa-China Corporation mm -hmm. Summit that mm -hmm. is ongoing, mm -hmm. yes. that will last a Friday. That's yes. why also asking that we borrow from this exchange to have exchange programs for our judiciary officers mm -hmm. so that we can imbibe some of this practices in line with the constitutions, practice in other countries mm -hmm. that see the countries to have a more united front even amongst the youth population like you cited. Yeah. Do you think that other than focusing policies of government solely on the volume of trade and commerce, we need to begin a knowledge exchange program to better our human capacity Absolutely. development? Absolutely, and we discussed about it even in the program. Are you aware that the Chinese have built a university of transportation in Dora? They built it's there. And they want to teach people all how to do stuff like railways and what have you. And that's what we discuss in that program. And look, what gets any nation working is skills. Skills for the young people. And what China depends on literally is skills. It has a lot of population and it has been able to get them to learn vocational stuff. Do you understand? And so they're able to, to, to get the country to produce and even in Nigeria here right now, Chinese practically like do a whole lot of our infrastructure. And I was telling because there was the MD of CECCC there, or an ED there, he was there, and I was telling him about how I've been in the construction industry for now. And I know how many Nigerians that they employ in their various companies. Those Nigerians who have chosen to go and obtain skills, they operate all of their machineries, they do all of those things. So maybe the exchange is happening like as much as possible because you have a whole lot of Nigerians now who on the account of working for all of those Chinese firms have now learned trade and are doing their own thing like and all of that and 
even in terms of government, Chinese come China and even a lot of those countries, China, Korea, Japan, even America, UK, and all of them, a lot of them have development partners here who who relate with a lot of our bureaucracies to even take them, train them, capacity. A lot of the times they, they pay for it and all of that. Do you understand what I mean? But then at the same time, what's important is we just need to fix our social sector. We need to have respect for one another. We need to have we need to always appropriate our expectations. We need to drop that insistence that I want to be like him because you don't have any idea how much he's put in to be where he is. Just why don't you just appreciate your own do as much as you want to do and all of that. If there are areas that you feel that the government is not doing well, identify that area, have as much research on it, put the necessary pressure. We need to encourage our civil society to be more bold, oh, perhaps you even say the ones that are available as doing as much as they want. But how many of the citizens are ready to take all of that route? When I was doing this stuff, I'm telling you, oh, I'm still on it, one hand initiative thing. How many young people are ready to join me and share my kind of mindset? I don't have them. You can't see them nowhere. A big they, question they're now. Discuss something different. Now, this is a big question, especially with regards to the perception of citizens, as we also invite our viewers at home to be a part of the conversation. We're in conversation this morning with Hashim Suleiman, who is a public affairs professional. Now, it's from the angle of a pathway to set in Nigeria on the road to prosperity through the preparations of a constitution that engenders what we call we the people of Nigeria. Now, the 1999 constitution as amended has been often at times characterized as a post-military industrial complex document. But Mr. Hashim this morning disagrees. He says that it is premised on the need for an ethical reorientation and social engineering to educate Nigerians about the provisions in terms of the legal technicalities as enshrined in our constitution. Only then can we have citizens who are empowered to demand accountability on the part of judicial officers in keeping with the provisions of the constitutions. He is also taking it a step further by inviting Nigerians out there who he feels should be like-minded to unite on all fronts to achieve the prosperity we engender in our nation. But I'll bring it back to you again. Mm -hmm. The question is, in the office of the role of the citizens, mm -hmm. there is also this perceived trust deficit Oops. between Nigerians, even in accepting the outcome of electoral mm -hmm. results, or even in expectations in gatherings, like you mm -hmm. say, where it is about religion, tribe, ethnicity, and the numerical Absolutely. numbers, <laughs> which many people always look at the timing. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you are to have any youth gathering mm -hmm. between 2025 and 2026, mm -hmm. everybody would tie towards the election. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the challenge has been also premised on the lack mm -hmm. of a national population and census. Mm -hmm. So what people do nowadays is that they hope to have websites on which they have documented registrations of mm -hmm. Nigerians where they can say, I am the youth leader of this demographics. Mm -hmm. How do we disassociate this numerical advantage in line with timelines or into the next election cycle? Yeah, so the thing is, yeah, um, the, the whole thing is around patronages. I would want to, and I mean, it's you even tie it also to even religious leaders. That's why you see religious leaders crave for um, congregation the size of the congregation matters because the bigger your congregation more likelihood that you know your your, your negotiation when it comes to politics and and what you should bring to the table will be bigger it's the same thing with the with the young people that's what they want to do just open a website a lot of the times even for the seat purposes just to have people register on it and then use the data to go and claim that this is who i have to bring on the table and all of that to, to negotiate. So you see, the, the thing again with all of these things would still have to fall back to the fact that how, how if I want to register on anybody's website, how have I been able to vet him first, to vet the individual who is claiming to, to head it, to, for, for me to understand his um, integrity quotient and measure it before I'm able to, to hook up to whatever it is that he's bringing on board. Now, all of these things, a lot of the times you would even see maybe there will be a recharge card giveaway and everybody latches on it and he puts in his detail. Um, that's all of it. So all of this crave for patronages and crave for, for, for peanuts would have to be um, disabused 
and so we can pr promote more of um, skill pursuit, people should pursue skills as against going for all of that. Because once you pursue skills, you're going to have more knowledge, you're going to have your, your self-esteem is going to be more boosted. And so you will have tendency for somebody to even come and give you 1,000 recharge card and you tell him, no, I don't want it. And you can keep it unless, of course, you trust. And now, if you look at the young demography, there's one challenge that they have. It's even difficult for them to believe that one of them can be their leaders. They would rather have all of these other bigger people be their leaders than allow one of them be their leaders. If you're looking for the proper definition of pull him down syndrome come through the young Nigerian demography. They would even prefer to pull one of theirs down as against say okay no we, we see this guy he, he appears like he can mentor us let us let him take charge and what have you. So the whole thing is about lazy patronages. Young Nigerians love lady pat they want to come and just put up documents they call it packaging and just get to the big guys and get as much cash as they want to get so they can also impress the other young people you know and and intimidate them and all of that so the conversations have to be set right we they were, we're a country that is in search of conversations we're in a country that is in search of critical conversations like this that we're having today i mean i probably somebody would have expected i'm going to come sit here and start to talk about how um, everything is not right or try to gaslight anybody you know I will, but I will need to bring out this fact as they are there is no country that has developed without hinging on knowledge knowledge and criticality as much as even people have not gone to school but you will go to other climbs you relate to them you will know certainly that this I enlightened people don't understand what it is so let's put out the conversation i really think there's a lot of sensationalism always beating about the issues that are not it's always trying to gaslight the government and make it look like it is all government and not any other person else i, I don't want any, i don't want to i don't want anybody to take responsibility for me not training my kids right nobody should take responsibility for that i must take full responsibility for it and if i do that that means i've contributed same citizen to the nation and that way you have a sane environment because of course the smallest unit of the society is the family it's the family absolutely now in the next quarter of an hour because that's as much time we have left mm -hmm. to discuss the closing part of this conversation mm -hmm. many talk about the fact that the morality police we have mm -hmm. which should start at the smallest unit mm -hmm. is not that we have a lack of laws no matter how bad the 1999 mm -hmm. constitution has amended as we have it is it is also part of the failure on the citizens in terms of instilling morality at that basic Absolutely. level. Absolutely. You can say that again. That's what it is. You understand? Instilling morality at that basic level. So a lot of, a lot of parents don't even parent no more around here. You can hear, see all the social reports they're saying either about now. I read somewhere in one newspaper yesterday about how high paternity, paternity fraud is. I mean, and there's also the high rate of baby mamas. So, so please, just be honest with me. How do you expect sanity from the kind of environment? How do you, where is it going to come from? You, where you have people who have grown up, seen no love around them. No, no item of, and that's why there's a lot of negativity. That's why when you read the news, you read everywhere, it's all naked. Nobody wants to give any room for me. I mean, for somebody like me, I can never allow for anybody to come and insist to me that it's all negative around here because I have been a product of, you know, benefiting from my pursuit of skills. In this country, this same country, yeah, it was not easy. I had to travel by bus through nights and all of that. I would not deny that, but it was beautiful. I mean, I love it. Made me who I am today. Do you understand what I mean? There are a whole lot of people who even see me and be like, "You don't look like you're from this part of the country." Do you understand what? Because there is a perception that has been developed about that part to mean like critical people cannot come from. And in this same nation that we're talking, that a whole lot of others are nagging on a daily. You will just keep wondering what's going on, the level of entitlement. Just a young boy buying small data feels that the president should live like him. Maybe the president should be trekking on the street like him before. Who do, you don't you understand there are privileges to offices? Hello? 
Don't you understand that if you put in your hard work yourself, you get to a point where you will have privileges where you would enjoy and you will not expect anybody to come and be wondering how you should be enjoying the privileges of them. So these are the conversations that we need to put out there. Parents, people need to get more responsible. If you want to give birth, be sure that you want to take care of the of the of the child you want to bring up. So you don't you just don't end up all of us were just helping to to pollute the space with 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 too much insanity. I, I really think this is 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 unfair on the, on the society in general, you know. And then and then afterwards, we now want to gaslight somebody else for the responsibility of, that we ought to have taken care of ab initio. So these are the issues that are out there. We need to enrich the conversations. Democracy is about the people, for the people and by the people. And when the people choose to be docile, trust me, there cannot be a vacuum. Some other people will certainly take advantage of that. And you cannot blame them too for taking advantage. I mean, if you were the one who sees the advantage, you probably take it also. So, so we have to understand our responsibility. We must enhance the conversation. I try to through my everything I have got, my social media, even if you will see that those kind of topics are unpopular, nobody will click on them. Nobody will look at them. They would rather insult somebody before you will see the barrages of um of of volume of people who want to come on it and but still I've kept at it steady. I, I feel a whole lot of people. I, I, I can boast of people that I know I have mentored and I've seen today that their lives are, are better off. I'm happy to see it all the time. The numbers are not much, but 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 I'm sure that um, with all of this kind of efforts by you people and others who are putting out their platforms to enrich the conversations, I, I expect that with time things are really going to now. Now, in closing, in our expectations mm. in setting a projective path through a constitution review for mm. our beloved country Nigeria, yes. many are hoping that this new constitution would engender unity and togetherness. Yeah especially when it comes to power sharing. Yeah. There's conversation for uh, creation of more geopolitical zones. Yes, there's that. There's now the talk about changing the, changing the tenor mm -hmm. of the of presidency. The to six years, to six years. In, in analyzing all of mm. this, let's get your thoughts in closing of what you expect this new review mm. or a new constitution mm. to entail in all of this power sharing dynamics. Okay, so what I feel now is that... Um, you know the patriots some some nigerian yes. patriots met the president the last time and they had initiated the conversation and he, he didn't say no he okayed their proposition i've heard a whole lot of them speak on on tv um mike Ozokume, professor mike Ozokume and, and a host of them they've spoken about it about how um they are proposing for there to be an executive bill from the president to the national assembly so they can create a, 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 a line for it to be that there can be an assembly of Nigerians who can come and put up a new constitution which the National Assembly um, should adopt. Now the only part maybe I'm a little com is how can the National Assembly now create that fiat in the code because you know the constitution review requires two thirds of the state assemblies and that's where the issue is because some some parts of the country um, are not comfortable with one thing or another. We've Hold seen the division the in the Pandef, Ariwa, Kutitifalo, Ohanese, You know, so all of those areas is what I don't know how they want to move. But but I feel that um, the, the, the president, um, or maybe perhaps the option of the Supreme Court might be utilized. Because of course, if the, if the Supreme Court pronounces, nobody can say no, it, it's become a law itself. So perhaps we'll wait to see how how that pans out but i know that um there's definitely going to be some changes in the in the constitution especially i guess around the tenure of, of of the president around um state police i think the state police talk is really um gaining a lot of uh, momentum and 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 a host of other areas and around the electoral reforms judicial i i know there's going to be all of that and um look to be honest i really think that all is not um, entirely 100%, but I really think that we're really moving to that point where we have to insist on everybody that, look, first drop the mindset of entitlement and understand that some work has to be put in. I mean, let me give you just this example. 
people keep talking about negatively about this Owando NMPC um, stuff going on. But I have a different understanding of it. I said, look, while growing up in my life, I have known Owando for as much as I have known Owando. And I cannot sit and say that whoever put up Owando those years ago has done a mistake simply because he has grown capacity enough. Do you understand what I mean for NMPC to patronize him? Like, how can I sit and have that kind of thought? This is a, a Nigerian like me who has chosen to invest all of his time and everything. There is no Nigerian that will pretend to not have known Owando all his life, for crying out loud, for, or, or rather for as much as it's been. So why would I now want to come and insist that if you have developed capacity enough, so many others started and probably fell, do you understand, along the line, People like all those ones held on. Dangote, all of them, how can I have any reservation about Dangote putting up a refinery and now he's producing one of the best PMS all around the world and it's going to start to patronize, would, would lessen pressure on dollar and it's going to be better for our economy. So can't we really see that there is light at the end of the table or that Nigerians who have put in appropriate efforts have been patronized by the system? So... That's an example for you to rather rant and, and be envious of Owando or Dangote. Why don't you write, start to put in the efforts that all those people have put in those years so you probably become the next Owando of tomorrow or Dangote of tomorrow or the Boas or the rest of them. So I think this is my own mindset around um, some of these things and we need to enhance all of these conversations. If the conversation is robust enough, trust me, everything will take place and everything will just in place but we thank you for setting the ball rolling on yeah. a robust conversation we're hoping we'll continue on social media we appreciate you oh, for yeah. your time on the show why not all the time